Hey everyone, how's it going? Lance here. For this video, I want to answer another commonly asked question I get, and this question is something I'm kind of surprised it's taken me this long to answer or do a video about. And the question is, Lance, why did you bother doing hair transplant surgery, and why did you write a blog about this? So yeah, let's uh, kind of follow the long and winding road that is actually my follicular journey. So uh, if you're if you're someone who is uh, watching this channel for the first time, especially if you're probably one of the two women who watch this channel, I'll let you all in a little secret. If it's uh, one of four major insecurities a lot of guys have, it's usually hair loss, height, career, or penis size. And for me, for a long time, when it wasn't my career, because I graduated into a very tough economy, and it took me a long time to be able to get a real job that actually paid a living wage, uh, my hair loss is something that really bothered me. It bothered me a lot and enough to want to do something about it. And uh, I think the statistics are that by the time you reach age 50, pretty much half of all men by that age have experienced some form of hair loss and two out of every three men will go bald. And that's a pretty distressing uh, thing to hear about when you're a young man and you're in the prime of your life. And all of a sudden you look at a photo album that was uh, given to me as a gift and I saw the, the amount of hair that I lost from when I was 15 to 25 really bothered me and uh, it definitely motivated me to do something about it. So, you know, I don't, I don't look at uh, hair loss as an unwarranted vanity issue because, you know, I kind of look at it as kind of like, you know, if you knocked out your front tooth. I've actually knocked out a few of my teeth and I've had them replaced. And I kind of look at it, uh, having my hair uh, restored kind of like that. You know, if you knocked out your front tooth, you'd get that fixed, wouldn't you? Well, I figured the same thing with my hair loss. And it, when it came to uh, me doing research on where to start, I looked at a lot of video blogs on YouTube from guys who were uh, a patient of Dr. Paul Cotterell's in Toronto, Canada, and also a, a patient of uh, Dr. Jerry Cooley's in North Carolina. And both guys did excellent jobs with uh, documenting and videographing their uh, their surgery as well as their uh, progress. And in the consultation to a, a patient of Dr. Cotterell's, uh, his consultation, the doctor was talking about how, you know, if you're uh, suffering from hair loss, you can do really one of three things. You can either, one, do nothing. And if you do nothing, you'll continue to lose your hair. You may not end up completely bald, but you'll still continue with the thinning pattern. Uh, second thing you can do is that you can take some sort of FDA-approved treatment. And I did a video not too long ago about finasteride slash Propecia, so you can watch the video for that to learn more about that. But you know, you can either take finasteride or Propecia, you can take minoxidil slash Rogaine, or you can take a low-level laser therapy. Now, the thing with those treatments is that they don't really uh, create any sort of a cosmetic difference. Uh, in my experience, I found that once I started taking those treatments, and I still do take some of them uh, to this day, they more so slow down hair loss. But if you have a lot of hair loss, like in your crown or in the frontal hairline, you actually will need a hair transplant to, uh, to bring back lost hair. And that's the third thing that you can do. If you're motivated enough to want to use treatments, you'll also need to get a hair transplant if you want to bring back hair that you've lost. Now the thing about those treatments of, you know, finasteride, Propecia, um, and oxal slash rig and the low level laser therapy is that you still have to take those. You know, you can't just take that and then think, well, your hair loss is gone. It's not a cure, it's a treatment. You have to continue taking that stuff. Because uh, otherwise what happens is that if you get a hair transplant done, but then you're not taking anything and you'll have a great looking hairline in the front, but then you could have a big bald spot in the back, and that's what I call a fence open field effect. So around the time that I was about 25, 26, I really was researching into a hair transplant and what, what it would all involve. And on my blog, I have a page that talks about all the other surgeons I looked at, so there will be a link in the video description that you can uh, learn more about that. And uh, yeah, and then when it comes to, you know, why did I decide to do a blog and essentially a YouTube channel on this? Uh, I have a degree in journalism, uh, gathering information, reporting it, and organizing in a way that is easy to understand for their people is something that always came really natural to me. And, uh, you know, when I, as I said earlier, I looked at the video blogs of uh, two guys who were patients of other doctors. One's guy, one guy was uh, Mark uh, from Mark's hair blog. He had surgery with Dr. Paul Cotterell back in 2008. And he did a, a series of videos. He also had a little uh, written blog as well. And then another guy named Hans Moore who had surgery with Dr. Jerry Cooley in 2011. He did a much uh, more detailed part of uh, his uh, surgery and his progress. 
And I found that uh, I think they did very good jobs of uh, what they did. However, I found that there was no real medium that talked about uh, what to expect at a hair transplant, what to expect if you're going to uh, look at a doctor, because this is essentially buying a product. And then also what to expect for every day of the recovery and every month of progress. So I found that, you know, this is something that I was really into and I wanted to be that source. I wanted to be that authority. So that's why uh, this blog has really taken on uh, a lot more than just, you know, me posting this. And, you know, as I have said before in a lot of videos, I really appreciate all the emails and comments that I get. And it really uh, gives me no greater pleasure and satisfaction than to help you all out and start your own follicular journey if you are looking into uh, doing something about your hair loss. So, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. And, you know, uh, as I said before, uh, you know, this is something that uh, I'm very passionate about, something that, you know, I want to continue helping you all out. So if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to reach me. Uh, you can email me or comment, and I'll try to help you out as best I can. So hope that answers your question. If you guys have any more, feel free to email me. Have a good evening and take care. Thank you.